Welcome to Okasi in the Field Executive Director Video Blog. Usually around this time of the month, you would see and read my rant in the Okasi in the Field newsletter that comes out to you and more than 3,500 other folks across the country. This is new for me and I'm going to have fun with it. I want to begin my blog by sending a shout out to Okasi's member agencies, all 236 of you across the province. You have shown how resilient we are as a sector. You have shown how committed you are to the communities with which we work, be they immigrants, refugees, claimants, migrant workers, international students, people with precarious immigration status, the undocumented, the poor, those who are fleeing violence, both intimate partner violence and more generally domestic violence, the children who find themselves thrown away. You continue to provide the support that these families need, especially during this time of a health crisis. Necessarily, my blog then is about the pandemic and how it is that those we work with are faring. We want to acknowledge not only the service workers, as I just did, but also our allies in activism and advocacy, coalitions like the Color of Poverty Color of Change, the Migrant Workers Action Center, the Workers Action Center, the Canadian Chinese National Council Social Justice, and all the work they have been doing to combat the anti-Chinese, anti-Asian ra racism we're beginning to see since the beginning of this pandemic, the ongoing anti-Black racism that our communities continue to confront, and the anti-Indigenous racism. This pandemic has shown how, how greatly frayed our social safety net has become. After decades and decades and decades of significant cuts to social assistance, the stopping of the increase of the minimum wage, the lack of health care, especially mental health, for many who reside here in Ontario, this pandemic has shown just how much work we have to do on the policy front, on the service front, and on the organizing front, because we know we will not see lasting systemic change unless we continue to speak up and speak out. To call out government when they've done positive things, and we've seen many positive things in the last three weeks. We've seen the federal government roll out the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, We've advocated, along with our allies across the country, to ensure that it covered as many people as possible and that to apply would be as easy as possible. And yet we know there are those who are still not able to access it. We support the 75% wage subsidy, wage subsidies that our sector, the nonprofit sector, can now access. That small businesses, many small businesses owned by immigrants and racialized communities, can now access to ensure that they can continue as entrepreneurs to pay themselves and to pay their employees. This pandemic has shown who the real essential workers are, who the valuable workers are. And yet those are the people who are most underpaid. They're the ones who have the least access to extended health care. They're the ones who continue to risk their lives so that we can buy food. They're the ones, or migra the migrant workers, who continue to work in our field so that we can get food to our table. They're the ones who pay into our system and yet has to have the most difficulty accessing the benefits that they so need and so deserve. If this pandemic is telling us anything, is that this is time for real systemic and structural change. Our, our political and economic systems cannot continue the way they are. Too many, too many of our neighbors, too many of our families, too many of the people that we work with and for are falling through the cracks, are food insecure, are one check away from being evicted. Yes, we are supportive of the money that are going to food banks. We are supportive of the regulation change that's happened here in Ontario, forbidding landlords from evicting people during this pandemic, but nothing Nothing is better than income in the hands of adults. This is a time for us to look at a basic income. 
this is a time for us to be talking about not only a minimum wage, but a living wage. This is the time that we should pay attention to the working conditions of those who are most vulnerable, our first responders, our PSWs, our nurses, our doctors, our other health practitioners. This is a time for us to look at how it is that we pay our early childhood educators, our daycare workers, our childminders. This is the time that we should pay attention to the teachers who are working hard to ensure that students have some online learning. And this is also the time to look at the families who have no access to that online learning because of a lack of interconnectivity, because of a lack of computers in the home, and even when the, with the school board stepping up in many jurisdictions to facilitate some of these equipment getting to families, we know that we have, there are families with large amounts of children who cannot and will not benefit during this period from the little that's being done by our very many institutions. This pandemic is taking us to one place, a place where at the end we will sit down. We will sit down as advocates with policymakers. We will hold government to account. We will say no to returning to the way things were. We will not rest until we have living wages for everyone. We will not rest until everyone can access the various income supports that's been put in place. We will not rest until access to those supports is based on need and not on immigration status. We will not rest until everyone who needs to be housed has a home. This is a time for people of conscience to wake up. This is a time for us to pull together our resources, our intelligence, our organizing know-how, to say we must, we must build a better community. We must build a better Ontario. We must build a better Canada. We must build a better world.